Right now we're still at the Crab Nebula, and if you watched our last video, you know how and why some stars go supernova and turn into a nebula like this one. Before we head off to our next destination, I kind of want to travel a little bit closer to the center, all the way to its neutron star. And a neutron star is what's left over from the blue giant star that exploded into the supernova that became this nebula. A neutron star is very small, they're only about 5 to 12 miles across in size, and they're very dim objects, you could barely even see them, their glow is very, very dim. They're one of the strangest objects in our universe. And if we want to understand what a neutron star is, first we have to understand what they're made of, which is neutrons. And neutrons are found inside atoms, and inside an atom, electrons are orbiting a nucleus composed of protons and neutrons. It's almost like a mini solar system. And just like how there's mostly empty space in between the planets in our solar system, there's mostly empty space in between the electrons and the neutrons inside an atom. Atoms are mostly empty space. To give you a better idea of just how empty atoms are, if you were to take the empty space out of all the atoms from every human in the world, you could fit the entire population in a sugar cube. Wow. When a star dies and goes supernova, the protons and electrons inside of its core are squeezed together to form neutrons. It is so densely packed inside its core that there's barely any space. It's so dense that just a teaspoon of its material would be equal to the weight of the entire Earth's population. And the whole neutron star, which is around 6 to 12 miles across, would have more mass than our sun. And then you have something like pulsars. A pulsar is a type of neutron star that can spin as fast as 700 times every second. Now that would be one of the fastest pulsars, because an average one will spin around once per second. When a pulsar spins, it sends off beams of radio waves coming from its poles. If those beams hit Earth, they're detected by astronomers and look like blinking or flashing lights. And actually, in 1967, some astronomers thought that these blinking lights were signals from an alien species that actually they named it LGM, which stood for Little Green Men. Yeah, but when they realized that wasn't the case, they thought maybe they were white dwarf stars. However, they realized that wasn't possible because some of the pulsars they were studying were spinning so fast that if it were a white dwarf star, it would have been completely torn apart. And then in 1968, astronomers discover a pulsar inside of the Crab Nebula. This is when they conclude that a pulsar has to be a type of neutron star. These stars spin extremely fast, and it's pretty simple. The stars are spinning their entire life, but after it goes supernova, it shrinks, and so it spins faster. A way you can compare this is take an ice skater, for example. If she's spinning and her arms or one of her legs is out, and she pulls it in really quickly, she starts to accelerate and she spins faster. This simply is just centripetal acceleration. And when the star shrinks, it causes the magnetic field to shrink as well which actually makes the magnetic field over a billion times stronger. And that's why they're so powerful and we're able to see its light all the way from Earth. So stay tuned next time where we visit another place in the universe. Let us know in the comments where you want us to go and we'll see you next time. Bye guys. <laughs>